Hello everyone, and welcome to another Directions Mag Geospatial webinar, today sponsored by our friends at Precisely. Thank you to the geospatial community for being loyal to us for 25 years. Catch what you missed at directionsmag.com. We're standing by to take your questions. Type those into the question box at any time during the webinar. Snap a photo of any favorite content on the screen. We are recording today's webinar, so keep an eye on your inbox for more information in the coming days. We also appreciate your participation in the post-webinar survey. Welcome to the talented folks from Precisely. Folks, over to you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Our session is Context is Key, Empowering Business Users with Spatial Analytics and Enriched Data. I'm super excited to introduce our speakers today. Clarence Hemfield, Senior Vice President for Product Management, Location Intelligence. Andy Bell, VP of Product Management for Data Products. And Ashwani Rawat, Director of Product Management, Location Intelligence. And uh, with that, I'll pass it over to you, Clarence. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I wanted to talk to you about the role that Contacts plays within data integrity as a whole. Uh, for us, it's really critical for our customers to operate with accurate and consistent data, of course, that's fit for use. But that by itself isn't uh, doesn't round out the picture. Context plays an important role to help our customers generate additional insight that they need to operate their businesses efficiently. How we do that is through kind of locate location intelligence and enrich uh, our data catalog that Andy and his team manages. We bring those sets of capabilities to bear through things like spatial analytics, which will uh, play a significant role in this presentation, geocoding, routing, visualization where the use case requires it, along with data, whether it's geographic, business centric or industry uh, centric, those capabilities together help generate context, bring insight to our customers, help round out the information that they have within their proprietary data, because more often than not, our customers don't have all of the access to information they need to make good sound business decisions around how do they improve things such as customer loyalty? Are there additional pockets of customers that they can reach to kind of grow uh, or expand within particular markets? How do they identify sources of risk that exist within their, their customer base and then minimize that risk uh, ideally? So context helps generate that additional information that our customers can use to generate insights. And so if we go to the next slide, we'll, we'll dig into this a bit further because uh, when you then use spatial analytics with our data enrichment, it enables business leaders to be able to understand uh, questions around not only where their customers presently exist, where their businesses uh, are, are located in space, what are the surrounding areas, maybe risk associated with those things, to answer a whole series of questions. And what you're seeing on the slide is just a, a small subset of some of the types of questions we're able to answer for our customers using spatial analytics and, and data. You know, where are their competitors located in proximity to uh, their key locations? Can they serve as particular customers within a, a specified SLA uh, based on where all their customers are, are located? Can their fleet, particularly in the delivery space, can their fleet actually reach those customers in, in, in a timely manner to improve customer satisfaction? And the list goes on and on and on. Uh, one of my personal favorites tends to be around quantifying risk, particularly in relation to environmental factors that exist, whether it's wildfire zones, whether it's things such as sinkholes, et cetera. Uh, there are plenty of ways in which our combination of spatial analytics combined with our data catalog are able to surface those the answers to those questions that our customers find near and dear. With that, I'm gonna turn it to Andy, who will talk to you for a couple of slides. Thank you very much, uh, Clarence. And, and as we heard in the um, opening session um, with Josh, um, reference within the Laveau research that you know cons uh, the importance of context as part of uh, a business analytics and this is where you know you're bringing location intelligence and data enrichment together and that's because context allows you to drive better business decisions and you're able to do that across multiple industries so you know, we've been doing this for many, many years, and we've got lots of use case case studies across um, a whole host of verticals. And just to touch on uh, a number of those, you know, we look at our telecommunications uh, customers, 
Uh, we've traditionally helped them with their network planning, understand where to put their uh, fixed assets, uh, most importantly recently with the rollout of, of 5G. But having got those assets in the right place, they need to know, well, who can I actually deliver this to? So the idea of serviceability, can I actually plug that property, that household into my capabilities? And, and that's a really important um, use case that we're now helping uh, multiple telcos out with, with that idea of here are the households I can actually plug into my fiber network or uh, can access uh, 5G. Um, we support um, the insurance um, industry, uh, looking at supporting underwriting, actuarial claims processing. And, you know, the important part of this is, one, that insurance company needs to start with a clean, validated address. And then with our location intelligence, be able to locate that with our accurate um, geocoding and then being able to enrich that with you know building footprints property attributes or legal parcel what businesses are co-located there is it exposed to wildfire to um, flooding risk um, to other natural hazards and then being able to use our spatial software to analyze that visualize that and drive um, decisions and processes uh, within those companies. And, and one of the key things that we see both across telco and insurance is how many of those businesses are putting context into their everyday work. It's kind of hidden. It's part of the process. It isn't some special offshoot, you know, the GIS business or whatever. And it is core, it's operational uh, and part of the ongoing businesses. Um, but we also look around, you know, uh, our prop tech um, organizations. So where they're looking at helping um, customers find both residential and commercial properties, being able to give the context of that property they're looking at, you know, if you're residential, how near is the local school? How good is that local school? What's the, the neighborhood? Uh, what types of people um, live in those locations? But also being able to understand how they market and develop strategy of where do they want to be able to um, promote their services and capabilities? And, and very recently, we worked with a, an organization to help them do that on a global scale um, and being able to understand uh, markets on a much broader sense uh, around that. And then if we look at our financial services organizations, uh, being able to help them, you know, like our retailers, understand the location of a branch, um, but also be able to understand things like insights into mortgages. So what type of property is the mortgage uh, being raised against? What kind of risks are they exposed to? You know, what's the value of that house and other things that might influence that, that decision making? But also around investment banking, you know, understanding, well, if we're investing in a business, where are they located? What's the hierarchy? Um, if they are got an international presence, where is that located? Are they exposed in areas of dispute or political unrest? Um, what impact could a major event in uh, another part of the world impact that supply chain and then the performance of those um, businesses? Um, so lots of really important um, areas that we help uh, organizations uh, run their uh, businesses. And, and just to dig, dig into that uh, a little bit further uh, on the uh, next slide is, you know, what a lot of those companies are asking is that where? So, you know, you can look at tables of data, understand financials, but what we're able to bring is something that maybe you don't see on a spreadsheet that's not in the database, that where, being able to visualize and understand um, what's going on and the relationships um, that location bring and how that impacts uh, performance. And, you know, they'll be asking where questions like, where are my customers? Where can I find more of them? Where should I expand my services? And that could be a retail outlet. It might be uh, an e-commerce looking at where they want to put 
um, their warehousing. It might be uh, an insurance company around how do I deploy uh, my uh, assessors in the most effective way? Uh, and also understanding where you, you, know, you find your, your target audience. Uh, and you can start to see as, as things build up, um, you know, how those data sets can relate to each other. And I think one of the key things that we do as a business is um, bring together, you know, data sets that might look disparate, you know, a, a building with wildfire, with a business, but we connect them together. And at the heart of that is uh, the precise ID, a unique and persistent um, address ID. And uh, through our uh, geocoding, we're able to locate and apply that precise ID. And then we're able to allow our customers to access um, context information, uh, data sets uh, much more effective and much more efficiently because uh, by and reduce the amount of time they're spending on data processing and spending time on understanding insights. Um, and with that, I think, uh, you know, Clarence, I think you're going to talk a little bit uh, more around uh, some specific use cases and capabilities that we have. Yes, thank you, Andy. And I wanted to build off of something that Andy was talking about a few minutes ago. On the left hand side of the screen, you'll see what's what's common in many of our organizations is the reliance on tools like BI and or Excel. They're ubiquitous and they do a really good job of reporting on information, ideally that that's good quality and fit for use, but tend to provide a view uh, using this commoner approach on financial performance most often. Some of them have started to introduce a, uh, some light visualization, map-based visualization to do things like show you locations of, of stores or, or where customers are generally located, but don't go much further than that. Our customers tend to rely on us to do things like what you see on, on the right-hand side to again, come back to the theme of providing context to the underlying data. So in, in the two cases, you're seeing examples of these three branches and the relative performance. But on the right, you're getting a sense of uh, branch number one, which uh, on one hand is performing very strong, has fewer competitors in close proximity to it. The other two branches have many more competitors in, in, in close proximity to them that are impacting their sales. But yet, uh, uh, branch three is still performing fairly strongly in, in, in comparison. So it now can beg other questions you might want to inspect of, you know, why is that store overperforming even though it's in a very uh, a, a competitive environment? Those are questions that traditional tools like BI and Excel can't uh, help our, our customers answer. It's that additional context that we bring through a combination of spatial analytics and, and, and data enrichment to give you that additional information. And then oftentimes, this is also illustrating where there are times when having the result delivered to some technology through an operational process is more than sufficient for the customer need. But there are times when being able to interpret this information visually allows a certain class of employee, whether in a data analyst, data scientist, et cetera, to be able to uh, interpret the information much more clearly, but then ask a different set of questions that ultimately help guide and grow that, that particular business. So we're going to go to the next slide where I think Andy's going to dig into a couple more examples, particularly within the financial services space. Yeah, thanks ever so much, uh, Clarence. And, um, you know, if we've focus on uh, you know our financial service organizations that we work with um, what we really want to highlight is well if you haven't got sufficient access to location-based insights you know what can happen what are you what what what, what kind of negative impacts could that have um, well that can look at things like being on, you know struggling to understand and identify your best markets where should you be expanding? Where are you wasting time and resources uh, where you're not being successful? Without context and without that location capability, you could really be missing uh, that understanding. And that could be having a really detrimental impact on your ability to be um, successful and deliver on your goals. Um, what context also, uh, if you don't have that context, um, you can't tailor your products and services. You can't tailor your marketing campaigns. Um, 
what a customer might, might need in a suburban uh high value location is very different to maybe uh you know a customer market where it's young in a city very very different things and if you don't understand that how can you make sure that you are providing them one relative relevant services but also relevant messaging to be able to attract those people into your uh, service or um, to interact with you it also will mean that you don't understand what your competitors are doing what's their strategy where are they uh, where are they not uh, and how's that impacting your performance and and ultimately you may be going where you are uh, entering uh, risky new locations you haven't got an understanding you haven't got the infrastructure there you haven't understood the competitive landscape um, and those things compound uh, to be able to um, uh, really not allow you to be uh, effective and uh, get the success you need so really going back again and i'll go back to um the um the the labo survey is you know the importance of context is is critical for for many many businesses and if you're not using it you're missing an understanding of how your business is operating uh within the markets uh, and with that, we can then start to um, think about, you know, as you look at an organization and the different functions uh, within those uh, organizations, how does context um, help those? And if we just move on to the uh, next slide, you know, you look at our marketing, you know, being able to understand customer segmentation, understand tailoring your marketing campaigns the message that message can change by location um, that's really really important and that's how they can do it you look at your business analysts they're trying to understand how they choose different sites and that's not just again a, a retail location or a branch location it might be an atm it might be a warehouse it might be how are you delivering a particular service to um, a, a, an area and how's that going to interact with um, competitors it might be your real estate department if you've got physical assets being able to understand the accurate valuation are you paying the right rent um, do you understand um, the market that you are located within and what, what feasibility studies do you need to drive and then ultimately you've got the financial analysts so, you know they want to understand are we making a profit are we driving growth um, context helps them understand the where uh, in terms of when you're understanding uh, financial uh, performance so lots and lots of areas that um, uh, our customers can exploit uh, context within uh, the business and being able to bring in those that capability and understanding. And really to bring that uh, alive, what I want to do now is hand over to uh, Ashwani, who's going to demonstrate some new capabilities ha we have with a product called uh, Map Reveal. So over to you, Ashwani. I, during this demo, I'll be showing you some of the key features and functionalities of our product. How it can simplify your task and save you time and ultimately enhance your overall experience with spatial data. As you would notice that map reveal can be accessed by a browser, which completely eliminates the need of a thick client to run your geospatial operations. It is a web-based GIS application that enables users to create beautiful map using their own spatial data set and publishing them for a wider consumption. People who are familiar with Map Info Pro are also familiar with workspaces. Similarly, map sessions exist within the map reveal ecosystem. However, map session can be shared and used for internal team collaboration unlike desktop GIS projects. So when you create a map session, certain metadata is also captured, like the date of creation, how many layers it has, if it has been published or not. This map session contains the stack of the layers and their styling. It can be shared with other users within the organization, or it can also be duplicated to run a different simulation. I'll go inside the map session and see some of its functionality. 
it allows you to add the data and it allows you to style the data. There are several styling options available like fix styling, categorize, graduated and heat map. One can set the zoom range also. The zoom range is extremely helpful in rendering the large data onto a web map. It has symbology provided for each of the features as well. Once the stacking of the layer is done and the styling is also done, one can run the vector processing tools. So there is a host of vector processing tools which are provided in the uh, map reveal. So after the styling uh, is done, one can publish these maps to share with the wider audience. So there is a publish module which allows you to publish the map and also gives you certain options to customize your published map. It has a couple of layouts and it also generates a couple of uh, APIs as well. One of the API is the web map API. So if I copy this web map API and share with other users within my organization or outside, then they can use it as a URL to open the map session that I created. This particular API is extremely helpful in integrating the web map with third party application like CRM or a business intelligence solution such as uh, Power BI. There's another API called Layer Data Access API, which provide access to the data which is underneath these layers which are used in the map session. And there is an embed iframe uh, which is generated to embed this particular web map which is created in the map session in any online application. Another aspect of uh, map reveal is the data. So the data module provides users to upload their data. So we support various vector file format like shapefile, KML, KMZ, GeoJSON and JSON. And apart from that, we have also extended our support for um, MRR format, NativeX and native format of MapInfo Pro. Now there is another uh, module within the data module, uh, which is data library. It is essentially a spatial data drive where we provide uh, the curated data sets for, uh, to our users. Users can preview any of the data and they can also add these data sets into any of the map sessions. So they can load uh, these layers into any of the map session and enhance their analysis. Now map reveal also provide users the functionality to collect data using the mobile app. The mobile app is available on Play Stores and the admin of the portal can design the form and assign it to a particular user on the ground. There are various widgets available to create the forms of your choice and then publish them and assign them to your user on ground. There is a role based access system available within map reveal where, where different functionalities can be provided to different users within the organization. Once the data is collected from the ground, it can be utilized into a map session to enhance the analysis. So for example, I can go to add data and I can go to a collected data a tab where I can see all the forms in which the data has been collected and can add any of this form to my analysis and create a map. With this, I'll end this demo. Should you require any information or if you want to try hands on, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. I thank you and looking forward. Thank you very much, Ashwini. And just before I jump into this final slide, I did want to say that don't forget, if you have questions for any of us, feel free to put them in the Q&A session and we'll get to those as we get to the Q&A section right after this. So as we wrap up this presentation, I wanted to end with how do we bring both our, our technology and our data catalog together to deliver you know, context for our customers. For us, from a, as this is a general architecture to try to illustrate how our technology and data fits within our clients' environments. From us, it doesn't matter where our, our customer data sits in CRM, billing, any system that they have, whether it's third party or homegrown databases, we're agnostic to all those sources. We can pull the data from any of those sources. As Andy talked about, often one of the first steps for us is to run our geoaddressing technology to verify and standardize addresses, to assign hyper-accurate hyper uh, locations to our customers' locations. And, and then most importantly, we assign this uh, precise CID, which is a, uh, a unique identifier that's persistent to our customers' records. So this ID gets assigned to your, your records. One of the ways in which we use the precise CID is then to simplify 
the joins that we would do with the data catalog that we have, the over 9,000 attributes and 400 data sets that we have uh, that are also pre-appended with the precise ID to, again, make those joins simpler, to reduce the need of spatial technology to combine, in many cases, spatial data sets together with your proprietary data to start giving you greater access to the context that our, our data catalog can provide. And this ranges from more standard data sets like boundaries, points of interest, et cetera, to the much more dynamic data sets that are becoming really popular with our customers. Data that's movement and, 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 and time and space, particularly around weather to be able to assess the impact that weather can have on your business and your decision-making process. Last but not least is our spatial analytics capabilities that ranges from you know, desktop through to cloud and server solutions, very much like what Ashwani was just demonstrating with Map Reveal, where here we're looking at on one hand, helping our customers generate brand new insights, combining their data with our spatial content to help them uh, generate new insights that they can use, uh, querying and aggregating data, whether it's business or spatial data, to be used in a, a wide variety of ways that they need to surface the information, again, through back office processes or through applications like Map Reveal that allows people to interact with the information spatially, and then ultimately exposing those insights in the ways in which our customers need to use it. Historically, through technologies like Spectrum Spatial, which were often used in the more operational processes uh, to uh, uh, map reveal, which is much more used by a data analyst who needs to build and interpret information on the fly, through to things like our APIs, which is a consumption model of both the software and data together to feed things like enterprise applications, the analytic tools that our customers might use either on-premise or the new cloud data warehousing technologies tied to business dashboards, any third party or homegrown solution uh, that our customers need our technology and data running in, we can deliver those capabilities to it. So for us, it's really important to be uh, hyper-focused on what is the type of insight the customer is trying to, to generate and who are the individuals, whether they're more IT or technology centric folks to business or, or data analysts who need to interact with the information and then having our technology that they use be the, 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 the linking mechanism to deliver those insights most efficiently to the customer. And sometimes it takes the form of delivering it through applications in, 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 in very tight SLA windows, or in other cases, people who need to interact with it uh, more directly. So with that, I'm going to turn it back to Ruslan, who will wrap us up and take us to the Q&A session. Thank you, Clarence, and thank you for all the speakers today. I'm going to bring everybody on stage uh, to open the Q&A panel. Uh, before I jump in, we saw some, we saw a lot of questions coming through. I know there was some interest in uh, geo enrichment. Uh, we're going to take that one offline and follow up with you to make sure that you have your questions asked, answered, and uh, we'll connect with you offline. Uh, and uh, with that, I'm happy to jump into the Q&A. And the first question that we have is, uh, is map reveal equivalent to spectrum spatial? That's that's a great question. Uh, and, and thank you for that. No, there, there are different uh, solutions. I tried to um, touch on a few things in, in, in the last slide where spectrum spatial and map reveal, the first uh, point I wanna make is we are actually integrating the core capabilities together. The primary interfaces are designed for different user personas. Uh, uh, core Spectrum Spatial was much more oriented towards operational processes with uh, kind of an IT or technical bent to it. Map Reveal is much more oriented towards the data analyst who needs to kind of build maps and spatial analysis on the fly and share that out. So those two interfaces are aimed at different types of personas, um, but the, the, the core technologies running in the background are very similar and we're blending those two to, together. So hopefully that has answered your question and shows where both fits within a customer's environment, um, but happy to talk about that even further offline. Thank you, Clarence. I think it also answers the, another question we got about the replacement of Spectrum Spatial. Both have unique use cases and might be appropriate in different, at different times. Uh, the next question we have is, what innovative ways are you seeing public sector organizations using spatial analytics? This can be a fairly uh, complex question in that, and, and I'll invite my colleagues to jump in here as well because they get different elements of it. So this will depend upon the type of uh, organization, what their mission is, and because one of the things I always find unique about public sector is they tend to be this uh, um, 
superset of all of the various verticals that we interact with in, in, in other industries. And so their use cases can be very, very uh, uh, robust and, and, and uh, dissimilar. We have groups in public sector who are hyper focused on kind of site selection types of use cases. The reason they need to deliver services to citizens and often want to do it in the most efficient way. And we'll look at where do we place uh, uh, could be healthcare facilities, depending upon the country and what level of support they provide in close proximity to people who need it. Complete opposite, and I'll stop so my colleagues can jump in. We have other major agencies where maybe it's a more intelligence use case or those focused on revenue collection. And so the types, the combination of our software and our data they will use will dramatically change depending upon what their overarching mission is. But I'll pause for Andy and Ashwini to jump in as well. Yeah, I think one of the interesting ones we're starting to see is um, some of the public sector organizations looking for some of the alternative data sets, which are really kind of just the new ones. So um, we are working with a number of, of um, public sector organizations around using a product that we call Dynamic Demographics, but it's using um, our spatial software to create insights around um, how people move around, what types of people are visiting different types of destinations, uh, and uh, how that changes over time, and mixing that with our spatial software. So um, we are seeing that as well around, okay, uh, how can we use uh, data sets that maybe we don't see through uh, government sources that can help us deliver our services and capabilities in a, in a more effective manner? Okay, thank you both for your insight on this one. Uh, the next question we have is, uh, what kind of enrichment data does Precisely offer? And I think Andy you touched on this one a little bit, but maybe if you can expand on your yeah. thoughts on this. Um, what I would say is, um, it's very broad. It does have a location characteristic, so but it's a series of attri attribution. Uh, some of it's global, some of it is more specific to sort of US, Australia, but essentially we have um, sort of six buckets of data, uh, sort of six segments of, of data, uh, one around the address and property, heavily aligned with our geocoding, the precise the ID, being able to understand the property attributes, building footprints and the parcels and connecting that data sets uh, together and we have that in the US. We have it in Australia, we have it in France, and we'll start to expand um, across a number of other European countries. Um, we're then able to talk about the streets that those um, addresses and properties are located on. So we have our Street Pro products, and they can tell you all about the logistics and navigation information, speed of traffic, volume of traffic, that type of things. And then we can talk about um, types of people that live in those locations through our demographics. Um, we use our boundaries to be able to understand those demographics, but also understand location, what's the neighborhood, the school boundaries, census blocks, those types of things. Uh, and then we have um, understanding businesses, um, and that is uh, our points of interest data sets and that has a, a wealth of information and then finally talking around national uh, natural hazards so wildfire risk flooding um, those types of things so uh, a, a very broad um, set of um, context data to help uh, many many companies and you know a, a lot of that is used on a, a global scale Thank you, Andy. Yeah, there's a very wide variety of applications for enrichment data. And appreciate you sharing more insight into that. We got a lot of we got a couple of questions that follow the similar thread. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm gonna bring them up individually. Uh, basically, the, the common thread is people are asking or interested in how MapReveal compares with Spectrum Spatial in terms of what are the type of uh, users might be interested in using this application and what are some what, what are some examples of capabilities that will be different between the two? Sure. So I, I'll try to focus on a different part of the, the um, um, what was Spectrum Spatial. So I'll try to keep this really brief for those who are very, who aren't as familiar with Spectrum Spatial as maybe some of the attendees. 
we combined a couple of products together under the banner of Spectrum Spatial. So the last time I was talking about more of the core operational functionality and, and what was historically Spectrum Spatial, there was another uh, web mapping application that sat on top of it that we bundled together called Spectrum Spatial Analyst. Um, uh, so I think my sense is that's probably what the, the question was about was the analyst application. And I could understand why the, there would be the feeling that there's some pieces of functionality in, in common with that and, and map reveal, but they're actually aimed at very different types of people. Analyst for much of its history relied on products like MapInfo Pro to do the creation and then publish into that environment. And then business people could interact with information, do some lightweight querying of it. Map reveal is much more oriented towards kind of the creation of the information that can then be shared a number of different ways. And so one of the things that we're actually exploring is publishing into the, the analyst environment for those customers who still need kind of a, 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 a custom web mapping application, but would prefer to have one that was installable as opposed to building it on, on the fly. So think of uh, uh, map reveal sitting in an architectural stack just below spectrum spatial analyst, and we could publish information into that environment for different users than those who need to create spatial analyses. Hopefully that helps. And we're, we're happy between myself and Ashwini to take those questions offline with people to talk at, at, in much more detail. Thank you, Claire. I appreciate your insight on this. One more question that we got here is, uh, we haven't used any spatial analytics before in our organization how easy it is to set up this solution? That's an excellent question. So it, it really depends upon uh, that person's organization's use case, because as I said, probably much too quickly, our spatial analytics software starts with, well, well, depending on your perspective, desktop products up through and including cloud-based solutions and everything in between. And so it, we pride ourselves in making those all easy to deploy. Uh, how and they're also aimed at certain types of personas who might need to interact with them. And so it would be really important to understand who are the types of people who need to interact with them, what types of systems, because some of them can be systems interacting with our, our software and data, not necessarily individuals. But as a general rule of thumb, we focus on the simplicity of deployment and the simplicity of, of how they're used. But that will also vary a little depending upon the key personas interacting with the technologies. Yeah, I would add to that as well is around, um, we spoke around the precise CID and linking our uh, data sets together. That's um, to allow ease of use, really. So um, so you, have to, you can get away from the more technical processes and really think around how do I link things together um, through um, a, a, an ID. Um, so ease of use is really important. I think the other thing to add is um, we are uh, a company that has got a long uh, experience and knowledge around uh, deploying geospatial uh, capabilities. We're here to help our customers deploy those. Uh, so a lot of expertise that, um, uh, you know, if you're a customer that's new to this, uh, we can help you through uh, that process. Thank you. Appreciate your insights on this one. We're coming to the top of the hour. We only have time for one more question. I just want to I just want to reassure everybody asking questions that we're going to be following up on those, but we only have time to cover one more uh, on, online. Um, the question is, outside of geospatial data, what other data enrichment capabilities does precisely provide? Yeah, so I, I think what's interesting around this is, um, although our data sets all have a geospatial component, they are seen as as data sets. So you look at our property attributes and there's a whole host of information about that property that you would consider just, just data, you know, um, um, you know, you look at our business data and the hierarchy, it's not particularly geospatial, but it, it's, it's attribution. So there is insights that we can bring uh, from those data sets that would not just be seen as geospatial um, in, in nature. Um, we do have, we also have um, business name validation services. We have um, a number of um, uh, checking services for uh, identity as well. Uh, and really, you know, um, within our processes and the way that we're um, particularly designed the data integrity suite, 
Um, if you've identified a way that you can link data, that might be an email, um, it might be uh, some other connector, you can bring other data sets in and be able to uh, connect them uh, with that data as well. Absolutely. Thank you, Andy. Thank you for sharing this and uh, expanding on that question. I would like to thank everyone who joined our session today and our speakers for sharing their experience. Um, so if you found this information helpful for you and your business going forward, please feel free to request a demo or a live trial with us. We'll walk you through your specific use case uh, and make sure that we find the right solution for you. If you would like to dive into more content that we have uh, on today's topics, I would urge you to please visit the Spatial Analytics and Data Enrichment Solutions pages at Precisely.com. There's lots of information that you will find relevant to the session that you've just seen. Uh, and if you want to see what enrichment data we have in store for you, go to data.precisely.com, and that way you can find the right data set that best serves your current business needs. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. With that, uh, we will wrap up today's session, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.